Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome to a special episode of Low Mid High. Today, we are gonna be eating at three different price points, three different levels of the most beloved Asian brunch style that there is out there. I swear, by now, most people have had it. I am talking about dim sum. And joining me today, I got a couple of friends. On my right, I got Chinatown native Good, Chris Banks. What up, what up? It's Chris Banks, true Chinatown native, and I've been eating dim sum my whole fucking life. And on my left, I got reppin' T. Toy Son, Cindy. Hey guys, grew up in New York City, so I've had level one, level two, sit down and take out, but I'm excited today to try level three. It's gonna be so exciting. So just to go over it real quick, we got three different levels, the takeout style dim sum, the sit down style of dim sum that most people have had, and then there's the third price point, this new fusion style of dim sum, and it's all in Manhattan's Chinatown. All right, Chris, what's the first level of dim sum? We're at Lucky King Bakery right now on Grand Street. Grab and go, I mean, it's cheap. Everyone's in a hurry, figure out what to do. This is where you go. This is like everyday dim sum. Let's go check it out. When do you usually get the to-go style dim sum? If you just want to go home, feed your family, <laughs> bring some home for your friends, you know, it's the easiest thing to do. I feel like especially in Chinatown, or like if you're just driving by, you can't find parking. Send someone in, grab all the food, it's quick. I wouldn't say that the quality would be amazing, just because they sell other things here, like bread, cake. I got two more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got two more. Yeah, I got two more. That's what's good about the level one. Get that 30 seconds. We're at a to-go spot, but they actually have the whole spread of dim sum right here. Okay. My guy. Yo. Go on. Thank you. Shout out to Lucky King Bakery. All right, man, we're here at Lucky King. We got the spread. Um, we got feng tao, chicken feet. We got long mai guy. We got the sticky rice. We got the ha churn, which is the shrimp rice roll. We got shu mai. We got pai kwat, which is pork ribs. We got pai kwat with churn fun. This is one of my favorite dishes, actually. Cindy, you were talking about the menu and how they change it all the time because they put the little stickies on it. Yeah, so like, if you actually look at the menu, they just put like a sticker over it. And anytime you walk into a takeout place in Chinatown and you see that, you know that. They had to raise their prices. Rent's going up, everything's going up. I totally agree with Cindy, man. As a business owner, like, it's rough. I mean, you have, you know, the rent goes up, inventory goes up. Like, it's just changing so fast in Chinatown where they, they need to survive, too. They everyone got to eat, you know? So I grew up in the Seattle area, you know, a little bit outside of the city, but I always went to Chinatown. But I would only eat dim sum on the weekends, like, at the dim sum spots, you know, off the cart. But I never had these to-go spots because Seattle doesn't have that much foot traffic. It's not that big of a city. SF, New York, Chinatowns might be dense enough to really sustain spots like this. A lot of people already have trouble eating chicken feet, but I'm gonna try it. It's dripping. This actually looks pretty good. Mmm, that part is good. This is the, the Junji Gai. The Law Mai Gai and Junji Gai, the same thing. The difference is the filling. Look at that saucy, trying to find. Mm. Everything is just packaged, and then usually what they do is they just pack it up real quick. They just throw in a couple of these forks. A lot of people just eat this on the go, or they just bring it home. All right, rating on the shumai real quick. This is the, the $2 shumai. I mean, I would give it a nine, because I mean, I've been in five years, and it's still the same. It's hard to keep, you know, quality right, of food the same. Five, it was like a five. Uh, I feel I like I've definitely had better shumai. It's still the same. I always thought this spot had very decent quality. I'm giving it like a, a seven. But you're saying this spot's been able to keep its quality, and it just had to raise its price a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's consistent. I mean, it's not the best, because we you know, look where we're sitting, but I mean, you need to eat dim sum every day, Lucky King. This place is solid. We're in and out in two minutes. All right, so we're going from Lucky King, which is to the to-go bakery dim sum spot. That's about the $2 range. And then we're gonna go up to the mid-level right now to one of the oldest and most classic dim sum parlors in the city, Nam Hua. Let's go. Okay, we have made it outside of our level two Nam Hua tea parlor, Chinatown's first dim sum parlor since 1920. My grandpa used to always take me here. They kind of kept the same decor, and they now it's kind of like a whole like cool style that they've kept. Oh yeah, this is definitely a really, really classic spot. It's super popular with tourists. All right, let's go get some Nam Hua, and we'll see who's in there that we could talk to. I'm here with Vincent from Nam Hua. 
Vincent, can you give me the lowdown on Nam Wa? I mean, this is like a classic spot. This is basically a family-owned restaurant since the 20s. Haven't really actually changed that much. We've kept everything kind of uh, vintage looking. Being in this kind of like environment, it already doesn't look like other dim sum restaurants. And then you guys were able to keep that. Right. And then I feel like now it's almost become, I mean, a super diverse crowd. All right, so we're here at Nam Wa. They've been able to deliver and expose a lot of people to dim sum that would never eat dim sum. As you can see, there's a lot of like Caucasian people here, all types of people. It's not to say that locals don't come here. This does kind of have that cool factor. We have some of the same dishes that we got at Lucky King, but some different ones too. I really wanted to get this one. This one is probably not a dish that you're gonna find at the to-go spots. This is a shrimp and snow pea vine dumpling. And then you have the OG egg roll. This is like a Nam Wa. I would say fusion, like westernized dish. This is the Sinja Kyun. One of your favorite, right? Yeah, it's basically bean curd, um, tofu skin. Um, that's what the wrapper is. And then in the inside, it's made with pork. One of my favorite is the eggplant and stuffed shrimp. And then you got the classics, the Feng Zhao, you got the Xiu Mai, you got the Ha Gao, you got the Ha Cheng, and then you have the Cha Shu Bao right here. I didn't try this at the last spot, so I'm gonna go for this. Did you not want to try it at the last spot? I think I was too focused on the sticky rice. When you finish eating, you just spit out your bones. Yeah. Like, it's like, hmm, how do I eat this properly? No, there's ways to eat it properly. I just don't think you can eat it like sexy. Unless you can. <laughs> if you want to try, go for it. Definitely gonna try that uh, snow pea yeah. shrimp. Shout out to Wilson. Yo, I love this dish. Namwa's price point is around the $4.50 to $5 scale which does put it at the midpoint obviously there's sit down spots that are a little bit cheaper like a three fifty four dollar I mean this is a cool experience to be honest and I, I, I think anybody who really likes dim sum should try to come to Nam Wa. now this is the thing guys this is my thing about sriracha I love sriracha but it's not a traditional thing it's not a traditional hot sauce so to be eating this with dim sum I feel like it's like a little bit this is like more new school I, I agree with you but I mean I, I could put on anything honestly True. Mm. How is it? How's the shumai? The moist is good. Wow. What are the traits of a good shumai, Cindy? Like I said, like this one's just juicier because the more fat there is in there, when they steam it and you bite into it, the fat kind of pops. If I could break it in half of my chopstick, I think that's a go. I think this is influenced by chill chow people, actually. It's almost like a hot dog, but like an open hot dog. Mm. As you guys got older, and obviously there's more foods, how do we balance going to dim sum, but also still getting all those American meals in, you know? And nowadays, when we have our own choices, as you know, second generation, are we still going to dim sum? I mean, like our parents took us, I think we should take our parents, you know, at the moment, we're all grown now, right. we should always keep, keep that tradition, you know? I feel like we used to be forced to eat dim sum with my family, but now, like, I actually want to go. Like, it's so good. It's like a, it's a communal thing, you know, sharing little plates of deliciousness. Egg roll. Alright, All right, let me try this chashu bao real quick. Do you normally like it steamed or you like baked one? I'm a big fan of the baked one. And then, you know, nowadays, even at like Tim Ho Wan, they got the crystal on top. Oh yeah. It's the custard that's baked on top. People, a lot of people grew up getting dim sum off the cart, but now a lot of spots, it's like by the order. So what do you what do you miss about the carts? I love the carts. There's still some I spots like that do it though. I love being able to, I'm very indecisive. I'll be like, oh, I want that, 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 that. I always love like asking like, what do you got? What do you got? Show me what you got. And then she's like <laughs> lifting it up. Hey, I got this, I got this, I got this. There's kind of like this fun like back and forth. And I do think it's kind of like a show because like she's going to try to convince you like, hey, no, this is really fresh. Whole sun scene, whole sun scene. Like this is. Yum, yum, chutla. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, um, it's just fresh, it just came out. You gotta get it. Nice. You <laughs> so want you know what it things? is with the carts? People tend to over order because they just eat with their eyes. Half the time you're already starving and then the first thing you do, you just order and then you sit down and you realize you have all this food. It's like Thanksgiving. Cindy, is, it, is that you up there? <laughs> Back from the future. Definitely like one of those gypsies that like drink potion. <laughs> And you actually like 200 years old. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're wrapping up Nam Wa. This was the middle level. What you got? What was your overall takeaways from this spot? Well, I, mean, I love it. I mean, uh, no complaints at all. I mean, I tried to add some new and I had some original. It was great. At the last place, it definitely was more mass produced, whereas here, you can tell that it's a little bit more well made, mm -hmm. a little more fresh. So, I mean, you go to the everyday spot if you need it quick and cheap. Here, this is the mid level. And then now, 
This is like new dim sum. It's fancy. There's definitely some stuff there that you guys have never had before. So let's go to Rice and Gold at 50 Bow. All right, yo, I'm here at Rice and Gold with executive chef Jay. Jay, give us the scoop on what Rice and Gold is doing in Chinatown. So Rice and Gold, we're an Asian eatery, not limited to one type of Asian cuisine. We love flavor, we love creating flavor, and we don't want to bound ourselves just to one, one type. I've actually had these two before, and I will tell you guys, um, that really does taste I, like pho. I'm, I'm it sure really it tastes like pho. Like, it tastes like pho, and it has a really strong, like, beefy Thank pho. You. If you pick it up by the side, you might puncture. Look at that juice. You see, see that? All right, who, 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 who eats Shalom Bao biting the top? Like, I, the little I break the top. You break the top. Yeah. You smell it? It smells like pho. That's good. So it has, like, the skin of a Shalom Bao and the flavoring, not just of a regular bowl of pho, I wouldn't say. I'd, I'd say that was, like, Extra punchy. She had that really uh, spicy kick because it has a little that chili on top. Oh, it's that chili. I was a little scared for a <laughs> second because I actually that was the first thing I bit into, and I was like, oh no, I'm either gonna yeah. choke or cry. Like I got the spice first, and then I got the beef and the juice, and and then the skin, and it all came together. So that broth with this one. So this is a corn juice skin. The skin is really good. Mm. Look, got to hold everything in, right? Yeah, it has a just enough of that crunch too on the inside. We have a bacon shumai with Benton's ham on top. And, and I like they put the little uh, mustard garnish because a lot of dim sum spots, they give you the hot mustard with either the chashu oh, like or that. the- yeah, I like that. that. Or, the, or the shumai, the yeah. Wow, <laughs> chashu was amazing. Yeah. I feel like it was very New York in the way that it had um, the pork and mustard flavor because it kind of reminded me some element, it was like a pastrami shumai. Close. That's kind of what the sense I'm getting. This is like the next level of dim sum. I mean, this is coming out of an innovative kitchen where they're trying to take authentic flavors of a lot of different cultures and they're like creating familiar dishes but with like a whole new twist. All right, everybody, that wraps up our low mid high episode of dim sum today. Cindy, what was your favorite stage? Um, definitely stage two, just because everything was just made a little bit more fresh, it was made to order. I'm gonna start with it's level one, important. I mean, it's a good grab and go. Like, but you would still eat at Lucky King? Of course, all the time. Oh, but number three is probably my favorite, because that soup dumpling, like, that shit blew my mind. I'm just so glad that Cindy, Chris, you guys were here to talk about Chinatown, to talk about dim sum, and to show everybody out there all the different levels. Yeah, I, I mean, I just thought it was so special that we could just do all three levels within a few blocks from each other. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. In the comments below, let me know which level you guys like to eat at and which spot you would like to try. Let me know if there's any other ideas that you guys want for us to do of low, mid, high. And until next time, everybody, I'm in New York City. And we out. Peace. It's just There's a lot of dim sum in Chinatown, man. Actually, a lot of dim sum spots scattered around, uh, even in East Village. Pretty much. Yeah. We're in Chinatown, New York, where dim sum lives. Till next time, we out. Peace. <laughs>